All right, hello everybody and welcome to Thursday night's edition of Attract Mode presented by Lady Arcaders. My name is JPEG, I'm going to be your host tonight. And if you're wondering what the heck is going on here, like I said, this is Attract Mode. So Lady Arcaders run small events throughout the year as part of a series called Attract Mode. So tune in every Thursday night, just like you're doing right now at 9 p.m. and Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. Eastern to catch awesome ladies showing off awesome games. And if you are an awesome lady, and you'd like to show off something awesome, well, guess what? You sure can. Because submissions for Attract Mode are always open, and we'd love to have you showing any game you love or really any activity. Do you want to show off an Animal Crossing town? Do you want to bake something, cook something, show us your tap dancing skills, balance table, just whatever you want to show us, uh, you can go ahead and submit that. Just go to ladyarcaders.com start for that handy submit link. But without further ado, uh, I just want to make sure that we send this over to what you are here for. This is going to be Resident Evil Village, Glitchless New Game Plus, but it's going to look a little bit different. We're actually going to be in the third person, and I'm super excited because that means more of Daddy Ethan. So I just want to make sure, big scared, my friend, are you ready to show us the magical daddy himself? I am so ready. Well, Hi. The floor, the camera, Ethan is is all yours. <laughs> Ethan is all mine? He's all yours. I don't yours. think that's true. I don't think that's true. He is a dedicated <laughs> family man. His heart belongs to Mia. And more importantly, it belongs to Rose, who is the silent protagonist of our game. We are going to be driving Ethan today, but Rose is really the crux of it all. We're only going to see her a couple times. Time will start as soon as I click in here, and it will end when we hit the final results screen. I just want to say thank you for showing up. I'm Big Scared. McQueer Variety Cats are here on Twitch. And I'm currently the world record holder for this particular category of the game. I set a new PB no a couple deal. days ago. And I'm hoping <laughs> no to do deal. it again right here before we do it again on Fatals. Let's so, do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, time will start in three, two, one. Let's jam. On a tank reference, a Cowboy Bebra reference right at the beginning. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's how we start off on a good foot. Yes, we gave, but more you <laughs> no, we start out by skipping our literacy. We're not reading. We're not yeah, reading Ethan post. does not care about literacy. In okay. true Resident Evil masculine protagonist fashion, Ethan does not know how to read, at least not in the speed run. This is Rose. The baby. Isn't she cute? She it's is like cute. To your mom. She's got a she little baby. Looks too scary for you. Uh, fun fact about this game, uh, as you may know about Resident Evil, they have a very robust modding community. And so if you are one of the lucky players who are playing this on PC, there is a mod for this game that will um, put Chris Redfield's head on that baby's body. It will also take that baby's head and put it on Chris Redfield's body. So if you like chaos, may I recommend those to you? They are quite fun. Those, that's that's a really good mod suggestion. Mm -hmm. I would love to install that mod on someone else's computer. <laughs> and not tell them. <laughs> and just have them witness baby Chris. Yes. <laughs> and then immediately, uh, the giant baby. <laughs> yeah, baby Chris and baby Chris. <laughs> baby Chris and Chris the baby, yes. Yes. Oh my god. But that... As fun as those are, those are not my favorite mods for the game. There is a mod for this game that exists. Um, for those of you who know Lady D, Lady Domitresque, uh, we will be meeting her shortly if you don't. There is a mod for this game that every time you look at her, increases the size of her hat. And so every time you look away and look back, it's a little bit bigger. And it's a little bit bigger. And it's a little bit bigger. And then all of a sudden, the hat is so large, you can see it coming from multiple rooms away. <laughs> oh, my God. Actually, that would be great for me personally, because I need to know where she is. It's fantastic. I've seen people play with that mod, and it's, like, clipping through the stairs, clipping through the floor. You can see her from, like, the other building. It's oh so God. good. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Ethan cut his hand. Yeah. Um, so you might notice that there are a couple skippable cutscenes in this game, right? 
mm-hmm. which is a huge change from Resident Evil 7, where there's only one skippable cutscene and it's really not that much consequence. This game is mostly skippable cutscenes, except for the ones where Ethan demonstrates his incredible powers, like I like to put it. Um, the reality of his incredible powers is that he can sustain a significant amount of trauma, particularly to his hands. So unfortunately, the game will force us to watch those moments. Um, anytime Ethan is just absurdly robust, we're going to be forced to watch it. So that was the first of a few of those moments. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've seen worse things happen to his hands. And we're going to see even worse things happen to his hands. This is just the start of the game. Yeah. Did you know that's what Resident Evil games were about now? They're just about your hands. Yeah. It was all over Uh, when Chris Redfield punched that boulder. The RE in Resident Evil, you might think it stands for Resident Evil. No, it stands for Wrecking Ethan and then parentheses hands. The W is invisible. Yes, it's invisible and silent. Also, some things happened, but we skipped all the cutscenes, so it's not that important. Yeah, so right now, um, in true uh, Ethan's Games fashion, because Ethan's Games have a slightly different pattern, the intro sequence has a lot of obtuse checkpoint hunting. Our first major one is to free that rat from prison. Um, And then we have to... Yeah, it's a very important thing we must do. We have to free that rodent from jail. And then we have to progress into the village itself. Now, I don't know why Capcom thought it was very important for us to meet that mouse, but here we are. And now we're crawling. Uh, definitely going to be fine for Ethan's hand to, to put it in that. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Whose jam is that? We don't know. He's just... It's strawberry jam. Someone spilled it. They're probably upset. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why they're not here. They went to go get more. All right. The first thing you'll notice here is that Ethan is schmoovin'. Yeah. Um, this is one of the beauties of New Game Plus. We have a fully upgraded Ethan at our disposal. Um, this game is interesting in that it allows you to not only upgrade your weapons, you can upgrade your player character in terms of... Health, capacity, speed, accuracy, uh, robustness, all of those things can be upgraded at the merchant shop by cooking food. RPG energy. Yeah, huge RPG energy. You might notice also that I have a bunch of weapons in my inventory, and if you witnessed very, very uh, astutely, you will notice that I currently have a lightsaber in my inventory. I don't use it on this run, but I like to point it out because it exists, A, and also B, because there is a different run that is a lot of fun, and by fun I mean it is very challenging, called Jedi Percent, where you run around and you are forced to do melee only, Ethan is restricted to using the lightsaber, and Chris, who we have to play as later on, is restricted to use his karambit knife. (laughs) It is It is a hard category specifically because of Chris. Yeah. Uh, That makes sense. And yeah, that will also include all the boss fights, too. The only exception here is Heisenberg, which we'll get to when we get to. It's kind of... You'll see when we get there why we don't use the lightsaber. Yeah. A little little different, a little difficult. It's a complicated fight with its own special mechanics. So we are here in the village. Ethan's looking for his missing daughter, what you missed in the cutscenes at the start of the game. TLDR, Chris Redfield showed up, punched Ethan in the face, snatched his baby, and left. And now we're here. Oh, you you missed you missed an important part of that. But we <laughs> Oh Mia yeah, yeah, yeah. He also taken... shot Mia. He also <laughs> shot Mia. Yeah, I can't. I can't forget the most important part. The wife is also dead at this point in the story. Um, And Ethan's just handling this. Yeah, he's handling this the way that any good dad does, with a magnum to the face. Yeah. 
Okay, I have to ask, what inspired you to do third person runs as opposed to first person? Uh, I like the camera perspective. I think it's fun. I also really enjoy the animations. So, as far as like the speedrunning community, most people don't like third person because it is technically a longer run. They've added some subtle animations that transition between cutscenes and the play in sections. Uh, but the reason why I just fell in love with it is specifically Ethan's stumble animation. I like to think of it like he's got jelly legs because he just becomes <laughs> floppy like a newborn giraffe. And yes, he's so slow when it's happening, but it's so funny. You're going to hear me just lose it when we get there because every single time and without fail, I laugh really hard. <laughs> And so, at this point in my life, like, do I care if it's the fastest possible route? No, it brings me great joy. <laughs> that's, that's literally a viable choice for choosing a run, though. It's like, does this bring me joy? Yes. It sparks joy for me. Yeah. So you might notice that I'm doing some specific strats here. This is an onslaught level. It does have a timer. At some point, I will be forced to wait out the timer. Um, RNG sort of determines that and it can be manipulated, but either way it'll end when it ends. What I'm trying to do to make it go faster is I killed about 20 enemies before Ethan said the line, there's no end to them. At this point we hide in the basement until the big enemy spawns. Um, you will definitely hear the big enemy when they spawn, they'll make a roaring sound, uh, they'll have a hammer, at which point I'm gonna pop out and try to murder him. And then we're gonna run around until the sequence ends. At that point, RNG will will be our guide. We're just gonna wait for a big guy. Yeah, we're gonna hang out for the big, there he is. You're oh. kidding me. All right, where's big boy? Come here. Yeah, you weren't kidding, that's a roar. Yeah, he, and here he is, here's big boy, hi. Big boy. Oh, who wants hugs? Big boy's dead. Big boy's dead. Aww. All right. He's sleeping. Now we're going to play a game of chicken with the game. I have to bait a specific transition type. Ethan needs to take either an arrow to the knee. Yes, an arrow to the knee. Literally. Or a stab in the back. Um, literally. And, you know, sometimes it can be done with enemies on the map. Sometimes it can't. Sometimes I just need to like pop in and out of here. Sometimes I need to, that's not the one I needed. I'm getting body blocked, Rude. this is fun. Rude. Okay, so we're gonna try to manipulate it the other way by running around. We're gonna keep the path clear. I'm gonna try to keep at least one enemy alive. One will jump scare us here, don't be surprised. Booga booga, ah. I'm so scared. Can y'all shoot me in the knee with an arrow, please? Please? Honestly, so rude of Ethan. All they want to do is ask him where the Jamba Juice is, and he's not listening. Yeah, he just wants a Cinnabon. Ugh, and he same. wants to split this it with his kid. <laughs> this is how I behave when Cinnabon is on the line. <laughs> when, I, when Cinnabon is on the line, you gotta, you gotta, here we go. We got it. Nice. And that was pretty fast as far as triggering the sequence early. If you don't manipulate it, it can take five to 10 minutes. Ugh. Yeah. Um, it is timed in a similar way that the Resident Evil 4 village sequence is timed, but not exactly. So our next stop, now that we have survived that, is to collect a couple medallions. The first one's here in this church. The second one is over here at Luisa's house. Luisa is an important character in the story that we will meet for precisely a minute yeah. um, because we're gonna skip all of her cutscenes. And then in true Resident Evil fashion, as an important NPC with a name, she's gonna die. I wanna brace you accordingly for that. Yeah. This is not Luisa. They love to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So this is someone else. Her dad got bit. This is Louisa in here. We're going to see her in a second. You know, sometimes your dad gets bit by lycanthropes, basically. Yeah. Um, lycanthropes. We'll Just, call them that. I don't, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're Something. We'll call them vampires, we'll call them werewolves, we'll mm -hmm. call them fish people. Uh, the game specifically refers to them as being infested with a specific parasite known as Kadu, I think? Or Kado? Yeah. I, I'm never sure how to pronounce that word, but it's a lot like the Las Plagas parasite. Um, and it is essentially made out of mold spores, TLDR. Everything in this game is a mold enemy, much like Resident Evil 7, except these ones have cooler variations. Yeah, I mean, I, I do like that about it, except I'm not about to Four. inhale a mold spore personally in for these options. I know. <laughs> you, I mean, you might. That's true. They, they're you hard do to see. inhale mold without knowing, so... <laughs> they're kind of hard to see. I just... You so don't weird. usually consciously inhale mold. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to walk right up to mold, put my snoot right at it, and go, mm -hmm. you know, and just have a great day. Y'all ever just inhale mold? Uh, I do, and it hurts every time. True. So I've gathered two plates here. We're going to put them in a door. Uh, but first, we're going to casually skip the camp cutscene where we meet Mother Miranda. Uh, oh. Mother Miranda is one of my favorite characters in the game. She's a literal deity to the people in the village, and she is the definition of mommy sorry. Yes. Also, the drip, the, w the, the way she dresses. Ugh. Yeah, she is the aesthetic, TM. Yeah. I guess this leads to the castle. Just some face medallions. Yeah, just a demon and a maiden. No big deal. This is on everybody's church. Or not church. I don't... A building. My gateway to my house is marked with the visage of a demon and a maiden. Isn't yours? Um, not right now, but that's because we took the wreath hanger down and, you know... Yeah, yeah, that'll <sighs> do gotta it. Gotta get that fixed. We gotta make sure that we can actually properly display our visage of demon and maiden. The man is of no real so we're meeting this. the four lords here. We're going to get a very short glimpse of them in the fourth section of the cutscene. Two of them I have already talked about a little bit, Lady D and Heisenberg. The other two are Donna Beneviento and Moreau. Um, all of them are very interesting and endearing characters. And they are all the quote-unquote children of Miranda vis-a-vis -vis the parasite infection. And because of that, they each have special abilities. They all have special I... abilities and very, very different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We hear Heisenberg here just being the epitome of a velvety voice in our ear. I was gonna say, man's got I love a voice his like voice butter. Out there. Yes. If you haven't, uh, I'm sure you have. The chat, if you haven't watched like the mocap clips of this game, like incredible to watch them. They're so good. They're very good. Also, I recommend checking out the voice actor's cameo page. Not necessarily to purchase anything, but if you go there, you can see the type of content that he's producing. Wait, and every ways. single time he's asked to do Heisenberg, he also does Heisenberg cosplay. Oh, good. Like, he's got a hat and sunglasses and a coat that he wears. It's fantastic. And I know the actor that plays Lady D also, like does a lot of those requests. Uh, there's a very notable one where she's basically like, here in House Domitresk, we say trans rights. And it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, good. Thank you, Lady Domitresk. Yes. Icon and legend. Queen. 
This is the Duke. He's our merchant. We are never going to interact with him on this run. We don't need to. But he's there as a moral support. Periodically, we'll hear him having a nice old time giggling, uh, grunting, having a nice nap, uh, asking us if we want to buy anything. We will not acknowledge him ever, but he's there. He's he's done some things. He's doesn't he in some cutscenes explain some things? It's just we'll be watching. He does. The cutscenes. Yeah. If you pay attention to him, he is basically your storyteller for the whole game. He holds Ethan's hand. He gives them clear and concrete destinations, and tells them essentially what's happening. I'm very sorry about this cutscene. If you are squeamish, look away <laughs> right now. Look away Man right door now. Hand, hook car door. <laughs> Ethan's magnificent power of taking extreme abuse to his hands. We are forced to watch it every time. Uh, we are at the third damage of the game, and it's it's not even 20 minutes into the run. Yeah. He'll be fine. He's yeah, gonna he's, have a Resident Evil moment. He's got his juice. He's taking a sippy. Chat, are you hydrated? Because if you are, you too can overcome stuff. I'm not going to say you're going to be able to overcome this. Oh, this is the animation I was talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the stanky leg. He's the newborn giraffe. <laughs> Bestie, He's what's so going on? He's so floppy. <laughs> He's so floppy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie though. I too would probably be wobbling if that happened to my hand. <laughs> <laughs> He's just wiggling. <laughs> yeah, that's Ethan, that's my jelly boy. legs, Ethan. I love him. Uh -oh. I treasure him. He's the reason why I run this category. <laughs> I I give his run one thumb up because the other one might not be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't with you. 10 out of 10. Wait, no. 8 out of 10, because that's how many fingers he has. <laughs> he, we can't give our score, but we still kept it at the range of 10. <laughs> we are so 20 minutes point, into my stomach hurts. <laughs> we are being chased by Lady D's daughters. There are three of them. They look similar and yet also are distinct and unique. Uh, they're going to taunt us and be incredibly beautiful. Uh, but here's the thing that most people don't realize about them, especially if you don't find all the lore notes. They are literally made of flies. Yep. Also, here's Lady D. Say hi. There she goes. <gasps> Mommy? Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Mommy? Sorry. Mommy, Mommy Sorry. come back. Mom. Mommy, come back. <laughs> you can blame it all. <laughs> you can blame it all on Ethan, actually. Don't blame me. <laughs> you can blame Heisenberg. Yeah. So, very complicated puzzle. All we had to do was shoot the thing. Uh, so and now we're here in the um, fungin. I call it it oh. because it's a dungeon, but it's also very fun. That's true. Ugh. Yeah. We are meeting the first vampiric enemy type. Uh, these are also technically zombies. They are also technically mold people, but they are vampiric in nature. They're just, and we're they gonna got a lot get going a on. lovely tour. Yeah, they got a lot going on. Their Tinder bios really Cassandra filled out. Caused all this mess. I can't believe Cassandra caused all this mess. Chat. Cassandra. I know. Oh, it's okay. Boss fight's done. Wow. And we okay. shoot her again the second she crystallizes, so that way she breaks faster. And off we go. I feel like casually, those boss fights can be gnarly. Yes. On a first playthrough with an unleveled up Ethan, uh, if, if you are unfamiliar with survival horror and like aggressive enemy AI, particularly in first person, those daughter fights are tricky because they're fast. They just run right into your face like a left for dead enemy and they're smacking you the entire time. So you're taking damage. Uh, and also if Ethan is not upgraded in terms of movement speed, you're slow. So yeah. like they pose an actual threat. On New Game Plus with a fully upgraded stake magnum, it's comedic because everyone goes down in like one to three shots. Yeah. 
But to get here, you had to do the work of upgrading Ethan. Would you like to know how many runs it took me to get all of the equipment that I have? I do. Twelve. Ew. <laughs> yes. Ew. The, f the file that I run my new game plus speed runs on is my 13th run. Ugh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Out of all of the time that I spent playing this game to manually unlock things, there is still a few things that I had to pay to unlock. Namely the lightsaber because I wanted to use it because I'm bad at the mercenaries mode. Yeah. If you are curious, the way to unlock the lightsaber without paying money for it is to get an S plus on every mercenaries mode level. I would rather not do that ever, actually. I don't I... consider myself bad at it, but my skill cap tops off at an A. So, like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, my skill on this game tops off at a... I'll be, I'll be back seating. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if it works, it works. And if you get through it, that's what's important. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're having fun. So this is a jump scare part of the mansion. We're just gonna try to bully past everyone. We might take one or two hits in here, but it won't be too bad. This Again, on casual, calm. this is kind of a nightmare. Oh, we got one. Oh, rude, rude. And they're gonna stand in the way, force me to kill them. That's fun. We're just waiting around. This is the cranberry bogs that we've all been told about. Yes, this is where the cranberry juice is made. Um, fun fact, they, they being the Dumitresque family, are wealthy and landed because they are centuries-old wine provisioners. Uh, they are most known for the Sanguinis Virginis wine, the Maiden's Blood my wine, which has, you guessed it, Maiden's Blood in it. Normal, normal wine ingredient. Perfectly normal things. I want to apologize to all of the sapphics in chat for skipping that particular cutscene where she grabs us by the neck and throws us through the floor. I am so sorry. This is a speed run. I love you. I see you. And I too wanted to watch that cutscene. Yeah, but you know, it, it, it'll it have to wait. And there's this cool thing called yeah. YouTube where you can actually just hit repeat on the video. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, we're about to get a great moment here uh, where we get to you just witness her. Hello. Everyone say hi to mommy. Mommy. Hello, mother. Don't don't smack me. That's rude. I need to go get my hand. Mom, you... let me go get my hand. M mother. Mom. So, Ethan's fantastic powers, we see here, uh, we just pick up the hand, it's fine. We gotta hand it to her, she really is a beautiful woman. Wow! I'm sorry. No, I'm not, I'm not, actually. Again, we've got floppy Ethan, his magical power is also oh. recovery. We'll get into that closer to the end of the game, just in case there's folks that haven't seen the end of it expressly. Mm -hmm. But um, Ethan is extremely uh, durable. We'll put it at that for now. <laughs> He's very durable. <laughs> durable like a lunchbox that's been stress tested. <laughs> yes, yes. And here's another one of Ethan's fantastic yes! powers. He can just reattach his whole hand. Jacket and all. The jacket is my favorite part because uh, make note of the jacket later. When yeah, make note of the end. jacket later. Uh, we can we can take perceive we can perceive the jacket via the block animation, mm -hmm. but um, I, it's just incredible. This jacket is phenomenal. I wish I had one. He's in the Where's My Wife fit, but it's slightly lighter colored because it's the Where's My Child edition. Yes, it's the Where's the Child edition. Good guy, uh, mm -hmm. limited run. Because so often the green jacket missing wife combo results in him being not so good of a guy. Yeah. yeah. Ethan is the exception here, and he is the one that I hope more survival horror protagonists aspire to. He's just a simple man, loves his family, loves his wife, and also lives in Europe. Nope, missed one. 
I got nervous. That's okay. You're playing us a beautiful song. In the first it's true. game, isn't he wearing like a button down, like a like a mm -hmm. business casual button down? He's straight up dressed like an IT guy because that's what he is in the first game. Like he's yeah. just a regular guy. Yeah. Now, chat, can I get a piss a p for the mummy? A p there Come she on. is. There she is. Any pisses in chat? Come here. Uh, yeah. Come here. There she is. Mummy. Mom. Mummy. Now Come you I might be wondering why I am calling her. Uh, because if I had tried to bully her on this staircase and push past her, she would be here while this door unlocks, just absolutely destroying my world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boss fight number two, daughter number two, simple. We pull the lever, we shoot her in the butt, we stand by the door with flies and wait. Please crystallize faster. You shot the flies in the butt. Sick of bugs. Yep, I shot the flies right in the butt. I'm sick of bugs. Ethan, I have news. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, babe, you, you got a long way to go. I mean, after everything he's been through, think about Resident Evil 7 and Marguerite. Oh, Marguerite is... Right? Good. Like, yeah. if you remember Marguerite, mm -hmm. I think you can understand why at this point he's like, bugs? Again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, chat, for uh, all committing to the... Yes, I appreciate you. This is the final daughter boss fight. This one is made harder by the fact that we have to first make a hole in the wall. Now, you might wonder, why do we have to make holes in the wall? It's because these fly people are only vulnerable when they're cold. You can only damage them when they're cold. And so you have to be in a room with a broken window, or a, a, an access point to outside, or a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Before we can actually do damage to them. Not that one. Big old deer head. Not deer, mm -hmm. I don't know what mm -hmm. animal that is. It, it's simply animal skull. Just animal. There, there's no clear animal indicated. Now, Lady D enjoyers, you will like this because we're just gonna get right up in her business and say hello. Oh, hello. Mommy, mommy, the mommy, excuse me, mommy. I wanna point out that Ethan's face is the height of her hips. I'm not Incredible. pointing that out for any particular reason, but I think it's a fun fact to know. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that her voice actress had fun making that voice. Yes. Did that not ring that bell? Which one's missing? That rang. Is it you? It's you. Rude. Yeah, ooh woo in chat if you agree. Mm-hmm. Ooh woo for the booty. Mm-hmm. The boo booty? <gasps> yeah, the boo booty! <laughs> oh my god. So you might be wondering what we're doing right now. The specific task we have right now is to collect four masks so that way we can open a door and hopefully find our daughter. What's actually gonna happen is we're gonna open that door and find a boss fight. Uh, but right now we have three out of four masks. The last one is up here on the Bloodborne rooftops. I yeah. hope you like gargoyle vampires because we're about to get a bunch of them. I do, I do like gargoyle There's one. vampires. Oh, love you. Love you, buddy. There's another. Here comes Make one here. Booga booga. They make some lovely bat sounds. Mm -hmm. They're squawking. Now I want you to remember these enemy types, because I'm going to ask you which one your favorite was, like Pokemon, at the end of this. We have our We have our wolf boy in small and big. We have Vampire Lady in Winged and Not. Uh, we have Fly Ladies. Uh, and I'm not going to include the bosses because they're special and everyone has a favorite. Yeah. Okay. I should be able to get out of the way. We're going to kick the ladder and then not use it. <laughs> but you had to it's get it faster to just fall. Yeah. We're going to pop this one. And then we are free to go. Now, chat. I know that we love the way Lady D looks. I'm sure you're very attached to it. I think it's beautiful. 
But I need you to understand that there is a much more beautiful Lady D inside of the woman we are familiar with yeah. today. Yeah. We're about much to meet her. She's so gorgeous. Stupid man thing. Ugh, you won't mommy. Live long, even if you run. That feeling when mommy calls you a man thing? Yeah. Just so the order here line, is like, mm. sorrow, pleasure, joy, and rage. The four nations lived in harmony until the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> Which one of the four of them is the Fire Nation? <laughs> mommy. Rage? That's fair. Yes. Look at her, she's gorgeous. Imagine uh, if her hat were six slink. times as big. That's so true. That's the only way she could be more gorgeous is if there were more hat. <laughs> no, I can think of one way she'll be more gorgeous. That's so true. I mean, it's I so true. In this form. Are you guys ready for the most stunning woman you've seen in your entire life? Yeah, the singular most beautiful woman in existence. Oh, Alcina Domitresque in her truest form. Like Here she is. Just hanging hey, out. Baby. Uh, are you an eldritch horror? Because I'll, I'll dritch my plans to see you. Wow. <laughs> I don't normally get this pattern. I got stuck on her. So she's going to do some stuff. Uh, uh, but I'm now I'm properly her behind her. Yeah, I wish I could quit her. This is the boo booty. Yes. So the strat for this fight in the speed run is to just bully behind her and then take pot shots at the back of her head. Not the big one, but the little one. Um, and from here, if you do enough damage, the first time she goes around, when we get back to the part where we started at, she'll take flight. We'll be able to shoot her a couple times. She'll do a specific voice line and it'll trigger the next phase of the fight where we meet her in a tower. In a casual playthrough, this boss feels like a Dark Souls boss, yeah. especially because, like, in the middle of the fight, she gargoyle picks you up and takes you to Anne Orlando. But yeah. like, <laughs> she really does. <laughs> she really does. That's She's like, happening. I'm taking you. Yeah. Okay. The voice line we're looking for is not enough blood. Need more blood. There we go. There we go. When the floor changes colors, you can skip. Just and here she is. She scooped me. Now, Lady D and Joyers, I have to apologize because she will be dead within two minutes tops. Um, she's gonna do a little flight cycle. She's gonna booga booga through this hole specifically. And then I'm gonna shoot her like four times. And that's gonna be it. I want you to, I want you to brace yourselves accordingly. We love you, mommy. We, we do love you, well. mommy. Put a 07 in chat for Lady D. She's done. Your, your 07s, your the Fs, your phone numbers for Lady D to review. Yes. Don't put your phone number in chat. Your giraffe legs, <laughs> put those in chat. <laughs> yes. So now <laughs> that D is out of the way, we have to deal it's with like the other place. lords. Uh, the next one in line is Donna Beneviento. I refer to this leg of the run as the dollhouse because mm -hmm. there are quite a few dolls there. Um, but that's not the only thing that lives there, and you'll see. What, no. <laughs> you'll, you'll see what else is there when we get there, gamers. Don't you worry. Uh huh. Uh, but the dollhouse has become my favorite part of the run, even though on a casual, on my very first casual run of the game, it was the singular scariest experience in gaming I had ever had. Um, yeah. I was I was beside myself. If you look on my channel, there's a clip titled The Most Scared I've Ever Been. You'll see my actual face because I wasn't a VTuber then. And you can see the just the fear radiating out of my body as I died in oh, the end Um But on a speed run, most of that is skippable. And so it's just like, haha, jump scare. Haha, -ha, puzzle. Haha, -ha, booga, 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 booga. And then, and then it's done. <laughs> Okay, maybe I do want to speed run this. On second and then thought. it's done. <laughs> you play a little hide and seek. You run away no, from the baby. It it's all good. It, it's yeah. like a 10 minute segment. <laughs> You're just babysitting. It's just literally what a teenage babysitter does. Yeah. Okay. 
normal screams behind you. Yeah, don't worry about that. Ethan runs faster than them, and the second he touches the door, they don't care anymore. Ah, the Bloodborne approach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here we have a little bit more forced interaction with our friend the merchant. He's going to very directly feeling. tell Ethan what to do Welcome. for... Yeah. Uh, oh, I accidentally oh, talked to him uh, so for the next leg of the game. I didn't buy anything. Why are you thanking me? You, you spoke to him? I don't know. You gave him, you gave him your two cents. Wow. I That's true. Normal. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's happened. Don't never apologize. <laughs> when I say wow like that, it's the biggest compliment I can give you. <laughs> In chat, it's uh, re recaption like the most scared I've ever been to the biggest scared. <laughs> <laughs> True. Excuse me, sir. Get out of the way real quick. Yeah. So... Between the lords, there are various points where we have to go back into the village for an item or a key or whatever. Right now, I'm looking for a um, expansion to the key that I already have. It is in a house with a red chimney. And in order to get to the house with the red chimney, I need this jack handle and I need to go crawl under a car. Yeah... This, this village doesn't really know what year it is. Like, Lady Dimitrescu, that was kind of like a 1940s-ish dress, and then there's there's cars, there's tractors, but there's not a cell phone in sight. Everyone's just living in the moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, the thing about this game is that it's set in the year 2021. It was set in the year that it came out. Um, and so... This is just a very remote village. Uh, they don't really have access to things. And the things they do... Are you, sir? Are you serious right now? How? It's not time for kisses. It's not... The lady did yeah, why are you, it's why not are you giving me kisses. smoochies? Oh, that's a cool dog. Yeah, that's a cool dog. We're going to ignore him, though. Um, and hopefully I'll get through this door fast enough that he doesn't give me a hug. Lay down. <laughs> Go lay down. <laughs> Just like Inuyasha, sit, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's true. <laughs> but yeah, we have to go in here just to get a little part of the key so that way we can go to the dollhouse. Open the box. Shoot the hey, boy. Buddy. Grab the thing in the box. Ignore that. Grab this thing. Beautiful. Now you have a key with four wings. Nice. Damn it. Better see the Duke again. The Duke will force us to talk to him one more time, and that is the last time we are forced to interact with him for the whole game. He'll be yeah. desperate for social connection, much like all of us. Mm-hmm. How was it? He gave us a map, marked it in everything. So. Arguably, like, not even arguably, like, unquestionably the most helpful NPC in the whole game. <laughs> yeah, like, RE4 Merchant, as much as I love him, he charged money for his maps, and they didn't uh -huh. have everything on it. It was just maps for his little challenges. He's like, give me money, and then maybe I'll give you a thing if you do my treasure hunt. This merchant is just like, here's a free map with every treasure in the game marked on it. I hope you find them and bring them to me. I'm going to make you food, and we're going to be besties. Yeah. Which like is ironic, like, because... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, it's like the Duke was like, oh my god, like, somebody from out of town, this is so exciting, I'm going to roll out the red carpet, I'm helping you with everything. Is something oh, yeah, He's like, a new me, friend, yeah. finally! Someone that's that will, will trade with me! <laughs> a new face. Yeah, that was definitely mm -hmm, Mia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, definitely Mia. She's totally here, and we are not hallucinating, TM. Ethan, you have to fix her. I mentioned earlier that the four lords each have different unique powers granted to them by Mother Miranda. Uh, Lady D, her power was her profound size, her claws, and her ability to sustain herself using blood. 
Donna's power is a little different. It's granted to her by these yellow flowers, which put pollen in the air that effectively put you into a mind control state. So you are constantly hallucinating when she's around you, and you see what she wants you to see. Um, What's going on? There's also the fact that she put half of her parasite mm -hmm. into her dolls, so that way she could control them. So her powers are a little all over the place. She's an ADD legend, and I adore her with Queen. my whole butt. New new hyperfixation all the time. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna garden and then all of a sudden she's got a collection of fifty dolls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> her next one, like obviously this is definitely canon and was a hundred percent written down. Her next one was going to be roller skating until Ethan yes. came along and kinda messed it up. Yes. But like uh, there's definitely roller skates in here. Yes. There's a roller skate doll and there's a Heelys doll. And mm -hmm. they were going to be besties on strings together so that way when you pulled the one, they both go. But then Ethan showed up and here we are, you know? Mm -hmm. Also, I love her house, like, up on, like, the cliff, like, overlooking everything. I'm sure it's yes. beautiful the rest of the year. She has a fan... Even in the snow, I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's true. You, it's just that you can't see as far. But snowy aesthetic outside, 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Never mind the fact that as we progress, each chamber is more and more degraded. Um, we're just going to full steam ahead into the elevator of uncertain destiny. Like a true green jacket man in a survival horror game. Yeah. And oh, I don't know, the yellow wallpaper, the yellow flowered wallpaper just to bring home like yellow flowers. Kind of like, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, it's that kind of lightsaber, huh? Yes. So the lightsaber has three modes. Red mode has high damage output. Green mode will slowly heal you while you hold it. And then blue mode blocks, like, everything. Nice. We're coming up on my favorite character in the game, Angie the doll. She's my favorite because her voice actor has so much fun. Listen. Yes. What? It's so good. God. It's Wait, such a strong God. characterization. She's having a blast. Yes. I Personally, I would love to play a character like that in a game where you're just given free reign to be unhinged. Look, it's Doll Wife. Yes. So that particular mannequin looks just like Mia. Um, this is a puzzle room. You're supposed to take the wedding ring off the doll and also find another key that'll open the other door so that way you can wash the blood off the ring and read this code. This code is Ethan and Mia's wedding anniversary. It is May 29th, 2011. And if you know it, you know it. It never changes. Oh, but nice. we're going to take the winding key in here and interact with the wedding music box from Ethan and Mia's wedding. This is a small puzzle. Literally. A mm -hmm. small puzzle. Mm-hmm. Did I do that right? I did not do that right. I missed one. Girl, let me do it. Please. <laughs> I'm, I'm begging you. Ethan, let me fix it, please. That's the main sort of issue with speedrunning, the glitchless category of this game. It's not so much like mastering the chips and tricks, it's making sure that your inputs are really precise, because when they're not, you get stuck in a several second Ethan just being like, I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> and then his legs wobble and it's just a whole mess. Mm hmm He turns into a newborn giraffe about it. He mm -hmm. starts crying. Uh, you hear Sweet Home Alabama playing in the background. It's just a whole thing. <laughs> Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, Lord, I'm coming home to you. <laughs> he is. He's like, mm -hmm. he's like, baby, I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm going to come get you, even if you're just a hallucination. Mm -hmm. So you might notice that um, Mia keeps popping up here. She's obviously dead, right? We saw her get murdered at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Uh, and so here, we're just sort of experiencing her. Um, we are being tormented by her. We have to uh, follow her around and listen to her 
allude to something that she cannot tell Ethan, but that he absolutely needs to know. Uh, I've been sort of alluding it to, alluding to it as well with his robustness. We'll get to that later. I promise we will. It's, I it's promise not we will. Right now, it's right now. What's very important is this hole. And the fact that as a green jacket man, I see hole, I must enter mm-hmm. hole. It's a that survival is... horror rule. Yeah, hole in ground, dark hole, can't see bottom. Jumping Going in hole. it. Mm-hmm. Jumping in it head first. You can't stop me. Maybe so we're just gonna first. take these scissors. Don't ask why our friends here have them. Um, they they're just very helpful. Yeah, they're just holding scissors. They weren't running. They're fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, Our wife is calling. We're going to ignore it. If you answer that, she just cries at you. So, like, really? (laughs) Here she is on Heelys. Yeah. And then, if we can get the lineup on it, we're going to cut the gauze off of this. Because it was absolutely 100% imperative that Ethan cut the gauze and not simply remove it from the doll. Yeah. Just unwrap, scooted it out of the way. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. No, we had to cut it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's actually get... like paper mache, and so it was kind of like sticky and hard to move. Ooh, yeah. What if it was crusted on? Gross. I mean, the house hasn't been cleaned in a while. It could be anything. It could just be like the funk of forty thousand years, right? Because this is the thriller <laughs> night. The, the funk of 40, that is a new band name if I've ever heard one. <laughs> dark hole, dark hole, dark hole, 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 Yeah! Uh, we're down here to get a key, that's it, and we're leaving. Oh, hole, hole, hole? Oh. Hole, hole? Uh, chat, oh, never mind, can. never mind what you hear. Uh, it's all a figment of your imagination. I promise you there's nothing strange happening at all. Um, but also, if you are the type of person that is squeamish, that does not like pregnancy horror, that does not like visceral bodies, maybe avert your eyes until the baby sound stops. I, why, why is your niche games where there's pregnancy horror? Because it's my hands. it's my visceral fear. <laughs> yeah, it made me feel something, so I gotta play it again. Mm-hmm. Now, remember how I said Donna can show you whatever she wants to show you? This is her interpretation of Rose. It's it's fine. She it's thinks fine. Rose is really cute and healthy. Um. Self-sufficient. She's crawling already. Look at her. Uh, what a she's crawling kid. already. She's, she's feeling strong and growing. <laughs> yeah, she's a big kid now. She knows words. She's on her own, living her best life, and she's hungry. Okay? The thing about that, um, that particular enemy, you gotta know, is that she will eat you if you get too close to her. Uh, and wild. It's it's absolutely something, and I'm 1,000% sure that at least one person bought the VR version of this game just to experience that. Oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're so right. But, are, but how many times are we going to see the baby from here on? Mm. Maybe two more times. Mm. Uh, yeah. We're going to see her again when we go into this bedroom and pop back out. And then there will be one final sequence at the elevator that is very stressful on your first playthrough. And it's still kind of stressful even on a speed run just because of the way it sounds, not because of anything else. Just the sound design is incredibly good. Um, There is a skip you can do here that I have not mastered where you abuse this door uh, by popping it back out real quickly and standing behind it. The baby will think you're still in the kitchen and just run past you. But let me tell you Uh, something. Every time I've tried that, she eats me. I think it works best on PC at 30 FPS. That would make sense. Because it's like such a weird... It's like a hitbox thing, thing, yeah. This is just how babies laugh. Yes, this is exactly how babies laugh. For this room, you have two options. You can hide under the bed, which I'm doing. This is the faster option. 
because she will move to our left and we can pop out behind her. The other option is that there's a locker behind us on the far side of the room by the breaker box. That's where I hid the first time. And let me tell you, if you hide inside that locker, the baby will stand outside of the locker for like two minutes and just be absolutely terrifying. So we're just gonna run away. She spilled all of her lasagna all over the floor. And I'm yeah. not gonna be the one that cleans it up, okay? I've done so much today. I gotta go. This is just what your house looks like after having like a couple months old crawling around. Like babies yeah. do just slime everything. <laughs> yeah, you ever try to feed a young child, like a very young child, a uh -huh. plate of spaghetti? Mm -hmm. Same idea. Yeah. You so are we're gonna being put the fuse in. We're gonna wait. Uh, chat, don't look behind you. Just don't. If Stop. you're scared during the sequence, just don't look behind you. Just don't do it. You can hear don't do out. it. It's I, there is nothing it's happening. happening. We're just gonna walk inside and it's fine. This is the last time we'll see the baby. Goodbye, baby. Bye, baby. Peekaboo. Goodbye. Peekaboo. Goodbye. Peekaboo. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Do I run Parasite Eve? No, because my mitochondria are not the powerhouse of the cell. I'm sorry to inform uh, you. That game is too smart for me. Here's my favorite sequence in the entire game because it's literally Apple. playing hide and seek with Angie. Mm -mm. There are five locations where Angie can spawn. The first one is always fixed. The second and third spawn have a pretty reliable two that they are, but it's not exclusively those two. And then the final spawn will really depend on which two places Angie is more likely to show up for your particular RNG. So we always find her upstairs first. She bites you. She'll bite your thumb. This is the sixth incident of Ethan's hands taking damage. I hope you're counting. Sorry, Angie. You're not supposed to bite. No biting. Yeah, no biting. Get out the I'm newspaper. Gonna, I'm gonna treat you like a feral. <laughs> Get the sock. Okay, so we're gonna check in here. There are two spawns in this room. She's in the first one. We're gonna hope for good RNG. Because Angie is in this spot, she will not show up in the other spot in this room. There are two places she can be from here, which is either in front of the elevator or potentially right here. I'm hoping she's gonna be right here. She is not right here. She's in well, front of the elevator. How dare. I know. We get There's more a of her trophy. Cackling, though. Yes, we get more of her giggling. We get more of her friends doing their lovely shaky head thing. Um, and we get to say goodbye to her right now. Everyone say goodbye to Angie. Hi, Bestie. Hi. Hi. Hey, your head's looking a little funky. Angie, Ange, you might want to get that checked out. So, do you remember how I said Donna make, lets you see whatever she wants you to see? Um, we are unfortunately not stabbing the doll right now. We have been stabbing Donna the entire time. Uh, here she is. Hi and goodbye, Donna. We're never going to see you again. And that is the second Lord done. So that's who was behind us. Does that mean like Donna was crouching down in the corners all those times? She was literally just running around with the doll in her arms. Yeah. Like, when you think about the reality of that scene, it's just her holding a doll chasing us around her house for 20 minutes. Yes. It's so funny. The baby isn't real. The dolls aren't real. Angie doesn't talk. It's all just icon and legend ventriloquist doing her thing. We, we stand a talented queen. We do. Um, our next lord is a little bit different. He's a special guy. Um, he's a sad boy, he's a fish boy, he'd do a big swimmy, um, and on a casual playthrough, he's an absolute nightmare because he takes so much damage, but in the speedrun, his boss fight is the singular fastest fight in the whole game. Um, and I'm not counting the, the Dumbatress daughters because there's three of them and you fight them at, like, across time. Moreau's fight is just ridiculous, and you'll see why in, like, mm, five minutes or so.
But first, we have to traverse the village, which means we are getting our third zombie archetype. This one is much more like zombies. They are still mold people, though. Don't get it mixed up. Oh, uh, real quick, uh, are you okay to uh, take a pause so we can do some uh, tech checks? Yeah. Everybody, we need to... All right, you may decommence. You may cease your panicking, cease your investigations. We have returned with the lovely, absolutely fantastically talented Big Scared. So are you ready to keep rolling? Yeah, I want to thank the tech team, and I want to say that we are going to unpause in three, two, one. Let's jam again. Woo. <laughs> Let's be dads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are the world's greatest dad. Um let me let me list some reasons why Ethan Winters is the greatest dad. Um, a, he is. B, he wants to be. C, he is genetically programmed to be. Now, I'm going to give you some spoilers from Resident Evil 7. And also, um, to a degree, this game, if you care about spoilers, you can just uh, watch the feed and think lovely. Uh, Ethan is currently... Uh, spoilers made of mold uh and he is yeah. made of mold because of the things that happened to him in louisiana which we'll get into in more detail later on this is why he's so robust why he has fantastic powers and also ultimately the reason why he's so family driven because ethan is a mold man he has been literally created by the mold creature right um mm -hmm. but, uh, formerly known as evelyn uh, to be her daddy because she picked him to be her daddy. And so by default, he is literally concerned with nothing else. He is the ultimate daddy. Why? Yeah. Because his daughter asked him to be. It's that simple. It's beautiful. She we... just wanted a family. <laughs> I'm not, he's not, he needs that shirt that says like the, I'm not the stepdad, I'm just the dad who stepped up. But it's like, the... yes. <laughs> It's like, I'm not the stepdad. I've literally been made out of mold. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Ask me about my mold family. Um, I love them and I cherish them with my moldy heart. Uh, tagline, Ethan Winters, okay? He's beautiful. He has no thoughts in his head except I love my wife, I love my kid. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I stan. And also, if you look at the books and like, like the first, like in the first area, if you look around, he's got like books on self defense and stuff like that. So his mm -hmm. his his three things were love wife, love kid, and like what if I love my kid? Not particularly in that order either. No. Is okay. I do have like a plot question though. D is there a canon time that the molding is considered to have happened at? It is near instantaneous. If you are exposed to Get it, you are considered infected. Got it. So I was wondering if it was like, because like I feel like there's like, oh, well, there's the big stab through the leg at the end. Mm -hmm. But there's also the part where like he gets absorbed through the ground on like the like shipwreck and stuff like that. But like it's before that. It is way before that. Um, the moment Ethan becomes infected is the moment he steps onto the Baker property. That's fair. The, the moment when he becomes a full-blown mole man, mold man is the welcome to the family son moment. Oh God, it's that early. It's that early. The, pretty much the entire time we know Ethan in the series of Resident Evil, he is comprised of mold. You ever just be comprised of mold? You know, sometimes. Ladies, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> this game goes out to all the ladies in chat tonight. <laughs> so we're coming up here on the boat segment. We've got uh, a boat key. We got a little, and it's a little baby boat. Yeah, it's a little bestie boat. We're hanging out. 
Uh oh, so uh, I, we do have a notification. Our tech is still busted, so uh, yeah, I, we do need um, to go ahead and pause. I see that as well. Sorry, friends. We're teching. The tech's molded. We're teching. So. We love it. <laughs> All right, everybody, I am deeply sorry to uh, interrupt your duck blur music there because big DuckTales fans in chat, uh, by in chat, I mean me, uh, but we are back. We have been blessed by the, uh, we have been demolded uh, by the wonderful tech team. So Big Scared, are you ready to start back up? Yeah, I'm ready to get this boat segment underway. I'm gonna unpause in three, two, one, let's go. We're jamming. Shout out to the tech team for dealing with all of the wonderful and horrible things that, that come along with putting on fantastic content, uh, in up to and including these shows on Attract Mode. Now we got a nice little blip of Moreau there. He looks a little different um, than you might remember him. Uh, yeah. He is a big fish boy now, as opposed to a little fish boy. Um, but don't be worried. The little fish boy's still there. He's just inside the big fish boy. I know. A little mouth inside a big mouth. It's very original. But we gotta wrap our brains around it somehow. What am I supposed to do? Also, he's kind of like a sad boy. Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, I'm so sad. And Ethan's like, oh, buddy, I'm sorry. And then he's like, ha ha ha, I'm actually evil. Like, <sighs> sad boys. Yeah. Well, the reason why Moreau is sad is because he just loves his mom so much. He loves Mother Miranda passionately. Not in like a, I, I want to be romantic with you way, but in like a, that's my mama kind of way. And he just wants her to love him back. And yeah. so he's out here trying to be impressive, do the thing. I should use this gun. There we go. And he's going to tell us all about how great he is at his job. I'm not looking for fish food. <laughs> okay, so this section, we are just running around. We are creating pathways. We are trying not to be eaten by the big fish. I know we just escaped a section where we tried not to be eaten, but apparently Ethan is just a tasty dude. He's delicious. Um, not necessarily- I, I don't know if delicious is the word. Because Lady D does describe his blood as tasting stale. So I guess it's more of like an acquired taste? I mean, doesn't like mold have like a stale taste to it? I guess that depends who you ask, right? I. You know, I haven't tasted too much mold intentionally to consider this, but it could. That's true. I don't go out of my way to eat mold. No. I just sometimes experience it if I leave the bread too long. Or uh, if, if you're a blue cheese fan, which I am not. Yeah, blue cheese. Blue cheese has mold in it. Now, Morel's going to tell us something very important. I want you to remember it. He's the best. We've got to do our <laughs> affirmations, Morel. <laughs> He's the best. He told us himself. That's how we know. Yeah. He's doing his It's okay. He'll do better next time. Yeah. And so, even though Moreau isn't my favorite of the lords, I do enjoy his section because he has very memorable one-liners. He likes to give us the old razzle-dazzle. He meets yeah. us where we are. Uh, he leaves his eggs kind of everywhere, which, you know, I wish he didn't. But in a pinch, that's protein. Typical sad boy trait, just leaving eggs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> are you telling me the Easter Bunny is a sad boy? Yes actually yes absolutely <laughs> i'm i'm sticking to this 
Ethan just did the slowest step in the world. <laughs> not even, not even worried that there's a giant fish monster trying to eat him. He's like, cool, whatever. It's like, that's the best right there. I can't compete. <laughs> Love that for him. So in the previous segment, we had to, um, we had to do the dollhouse segment. We had to find some masks. Here we are finding Crank, and we are also cranking the Crank. You know, consistency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am a simple gamer. I see the Crank, I crank the Crank. Yeah. <laughs> New game, Ratchet and Crank. <laughs> yes, and it's just Jason Statham running yeah. really fast. reason we came out here is to get this particular windmill rolling. We needed the crank off the other one because if you touch this one, it'll break. Uh, but now that we have the other one, it's just disappeared completely. Rotating this crank turns on the power for the sluice, which will allow us to drain the water that Moreau was swimming in. At which point he okay. essentially gets flushed out and we can fight him. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the merchant having a nice little time. No. He didn't say anything. That's sad. Usually he says something. I'm we'll say something on our way out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear him in there giggling, having a chuckle, having a nap. If you go in there and bother him, he's like, break time's over. I see. Got it. We're just watching things drain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might be wondering what mermaids look like, but that right there is a merman. Mm -hmm. So true. Merman. <laughs> I need a mere. I need a merman. I'm holding out for a merman till the end. <laughs> <laughs> Four, five, six shots on Moreau, and there he goes. And that's the Moreau boss fight. Up ahead. On a casual or a new game playthrough, that boss fight will take you many minutes because he is a tank. Um, without fully upgraded weapons, if you don't get the Magnum, like, on a first playthrough, there's the Wolfsbane Magnum, which is a really good gun, but it only does half the damage that the gun that I'm using does. So it's still a very long fight. But now we have a, a key with six wings on it, and we get to go see Heisenberg. Are you excited to see Heisenberg? Of course I'm excited to see Heisenberg. <sighs> Love me some Heisenberg. Who now, wins? I jokingly call him Daddy Heisenberg, but he's not the daddy you're here to see today. Yeah, Ethan's the daddy. It's true. Look at these luscious eyelashes. Ugh. The babe. Look at the side profile. He won't let us see the whole thing. But you get little glimpses of Ethan's face in third person, and I think that's lovely. I'm sure he's smiling the whole time. He's not. He's He looks like, um... Have you ever seen a picture of a really sad looking deer? Because that's what Ethan looks like. Have yeah. you seen a harbor seal begging for food? Because that's what Ethan Winters <laughs> looks like. He's got these massive watery eyes and just the saddest face. Oh my god. I love that. You mean it's not that smile that we see? <laughs> No, no, no. My my Discord profile picture is a uh, a face tuned version of Ethan where he's forced to smile because he never once smiles in this game. Yeah. If you use the hack to change where the camera positioning is to see his face, he's doing like an angie face. Like if you do the little the carrot, the colon, and the upside down parenthesis. Proud of him, I guess. He mad. No talk him or his daughter ever again. <laughs> no talk him. He angie. Yeah, <laughs> he angie. He's so angie. 
Also, I love how oh, my... there was just like a giant ram in the middle of town and you were just like, bye. Yeah, that ram is a run killer. If you're going for a PB and have bad RNG on enemy placement, that ram will be right in your way and it will headbutt you. Why are you grabbing me? Get out of my way. They were just like, oh my god, big scared, big fan. I want a hug. And I'm like, please, <laughs> consent. <laughs> Where's my hug? No! No! Where's my kiss on the cheek, Ethan? It's at the grocery store where you left it. Yeah. <laughs> grocery store. I want to point out that his jacket still has a wound on it, but it's assembled. Yeah. <laughs> Your jacket can scar. It has a scar tissue on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you reattach your sleeve. It's actually got like scar tissue. Uh, those yes. are stitches. Okay. Is there anyone over here? Yep. Is there anyone over here? Yep. Got one more coming down the middle. Now we back into this door until it lets us through. And uh, when you're able to, if we can take another. Maybe we could take another pause to clear out some mold. <laughs> we got more mold growing we up. It happens all the time. Mold. We do have more mold. I lost count. I, lo I lost count of whole. I'm pretty sure that was 10 whole. All right. Hey, uh, chat. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed our whole chant. That is important to you. Clear the mold away. Uh, mm -hmm. And all right. Big Scared, are you ready to... Uh, are you are you ready for whole? <laughs> I'm so ready. I'm so ready to just jump right in, as we say. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to jump right back in in three, two, one. Let's whole. You see what I did there? <laughs> I loved it. Because we're going into the strong hold. Mm hmm. I, that's, you know what? This is, a, this is a very pun heavy run. It's a pun run. It's There's... a dad joke celebration. Oh. We are oh, here to true. celebrate ultimate dad, Ethan Winters, literally molded to be perfection. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day <laughs> to Ethan and Ethan alone. You've heard of The Last of Us? He is the best of us. Uh, <laughs> is someone getting the best, the best, the best, the best of whole? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you notice we're here in the stronghold. You would think we'd be fighting Heisenberg right now, but no, he wants us to fight his werewolf army. Are you serious right now? Get out of my way. Ah, uh, rude. Definitely rude. Um, we are going to have to deal with another big boy here. This big boy likes to party. He invites all of his friends. He likes to yell. He likes to do a little hoot nanny. Wow. Um, and, and sometimes it goes really well. Other times, you know, it goes even better. So we're going to hope for even better. He liked to party. He like he liked to party. <laughs> My name is Ethan Winters, and I like to party. <laughs> the Venga bus is coming. Oh man! All of a sudden, you just see Chris Redfield doing that dance, like the Venga mm -hmm. bus guy from from the old oh, Six what about Flags commercials. Yes, yeah, like the old Six Flags man. <laughs> <laughs> He's out there doing the kick dance. Yeah. Specifically, Chris Redfield. Yes, Chris Redfield doing a kick dance, and then he ends by punching the whole Vanga bus. That's not good. So this fight is interesting because if he's allowed to roar, he will spawn helpers. But if we shoot him too often, he won't come down here. Mm. That's a delicate dance. Yeah, you have to shoot him just frequently enough that he comes down here. We got a quick kill. And we are out of here. Howdy 5,000. It's true. There are 5,000 Audis. Mm -hmm. 
There's only 5,000 Audis in production. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. If there's if there's all those big guys with the hammers, like, are they related? Are they Hammer Brothers? You know, I would like to think so. Um, in the lore of this game, uh, for those of you who are like Resident Evil buffs, you might know that quite a bit of content was cut from the ambitions of this game. Um, in the initial sort of script, Heisenberg had a twin. And also a father that he wanted to fight. Uh, Lady D did not turn into that big monster. In the original script for the game, the merchant turns into that big monster. But we don't fight oh. him in the main game. That's fun. Yeah. In the original sort of plan for the game, uh, the final secret fifth lord is supposed to be the merchant. And he literally was supposed to, like, explode into a creature. That's why he's so corpulent. Because mm -hmm. he has a larger creature and a, a second form that is bigger. And it was supposed to be, like, his body on top of it. Don't- <gasps> Ooh. That was rude. Uncalled for. Ugh. But yeah, he's he was supposed to be hiding, like, a monster inside of his corpulent form. And then they didn't do that. They gave it to Lady D because she's too powerful. I, see you return alive. <laughs> I mean... At the same time, though, like, I feel like what they kept that? some of his confusing powers, like his whole, like, I'm always where you are, and I know everything, and I'm totally fine while everything else is happening. So, like, mm -hmm. I feel like they still kind of kept it. It's there to a degree, but yeah. I feel like that's more so groundwork for the DLC. Uh, there, oh. Folks, there is a DLC for this game where you play as a 19-year-old Rose Winters. Um, and the main villain for the first act of the game is the Duke, but it's not really the Duke. It's just kind of a memory. It's complicated. Um, but he's like a bad guy in that one. And it's not even what you would think. He just puts on a mask and has zombie friends. Oh. And I'm like, bestie, I wanted so much Mid. more for you. Yeah. What's going on? But I feel particularly robbed about the lack of Heisenberg brothers. There should have been two of them. They should have both been hot. They mm -hmm. should have held hands in a platonic way and taunted me romantically, okay? I am a simple gamer. Yeah, I'm a simple gamer and also just big Heisenberg fan. I am a simple gamer. I see a cutie. I mm -hmm. want to admire the cutie. I love the way he says Ethan Winters because it's not like he says it like it's not a normal name for him. Yeah, he well, he's we're in Eastern Europe, by the way. This village is not in America. And so it's amazing, at least to me, that like this very rural village in a very deep part of Eastern Europe can communicate with Ethan without any translation errors. Yeah, you know, now that I'm thinking about that, that kind of makes sense. It's like, how how are we doing this? You know, proud of all of you. You got on Duolingo. Um, mm -hmm. That's either the true hero or villain of the game, depending on how you look at the Duolingo owl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Heisenberg specifically had the, like, mid-Atlantic coach, the dialect coach that was like, here's your podcast. You're going to learn how to host an old-timey radio state. And he's like, yes. I'd like to speak to you I about love this Rose. description. And Miranda. Oh, come on in. Don't worry. He wants you to come in and see uh, all of the things he built. If Heisenberg were a just average American that did streams, I imagine he'd be a Gunpla streamer. You know like, what? He'd be assembling all those model kits. I, I, I agree with this. I, I accept this information, like, immediately. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Except, like, <laughs> would he be one of those where, like, he, like, he's assembling, like, everything, but he's got, like, all of his redeems are, like, super loud jump scares, so as he's assembling yes. stuff, he gets scared, ruins it, and then gets pissed. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're either, uh, jump scare alerts or very self-serving, like, I'm the best, thank you for following. Like, <laughs> like... You subscribe to the best lord, or something like that. Just 
absolutely full of swagger and self-praise because that's Heisenberg. He loves himself. He's his number one fan. If no one else is going to do it, it's going to be him. Why is there not a sloppy Heisenberg VTuber? Like, <laughs> hello? Bestie, uh, if you can find it, you send me a link. I want to see it. <laughs> I mean, you know that it'll just be blowing up your DMs later like, I found him, I found him, I found him. Like, <laughs> Listen, listen, I'm going to be honest with chat here because you already know that I've sent you those Miku mod yeah. videos of Ethan and Heisenberg dancing. This place is messed up. They're so I'm good. The they are. They're beautiful. Yeah, All right, if... here we are. Heisenberg's factory. Uh, the merchant is to our left. We're going to ignore him until we have to share an elevator with him, at which point I'm still not going to interact with him. But this is my least favorite part of the game. I'm going to be honest. I love Heisenberg. This part... Not so much. It's a maze. Like, it's a labyrinth. It's dark. It's very easy to get confused in here. There's some questionable IP happening. Um, it's just definitely some of the times ever. Yeah. kind of, yeah. You know? What's kind of a bummer is because you're like, oh, yeah, Heisenberg, let's go. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, oh, Heisenberg just wants a, a very big man to, to drill people. I see. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe he wouldn't love me after all. What? Maybe. You, you can't assume that about him, okay? You got you to keep up true. hope. It's true. You got to keep it's up hope. It's true. <laughs> it's true. He just wants to be the best. That's true. And like you can bring out the best in him. You can you can change him. You can fix him. I can get him to bathe. Oh my god, it's so true. Chat, please. Uh, hygiene is important. Don't be like Heisenberg. Don't don't just be. Don't just brush don't just be like that. Please take care of yourself. Brush your teeth. Brush your hair. Take a shower. You deserve. Trim things. what needs to be trimmed in ways that make you feel good. And not just what your mommy tells you to do. Yeah. Yes. Your, Unless, your of course, body is uh, your temple. yeah, your body is your temple. Unless it belongs to mommy. I'm just saying. Um, for for no reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Your body is your molded over temple, um, and therefore is extremely durable and can be healed. So no matter what you do, you'll be fine. Do not take this advice outside of the stream. I'm begging you. I'm literally begging yeah. you. Yeah, I'm literally begging you um, to do the opposite of what we're saying. <laughs> well, okay. Only some of the opposites. Actually brush your teeth, though. Yeah, actually brush your teeth. Actually brush your hair. Actually bathe, please. In fact, you should do it regularly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe don't think that you're impervious and can, like, seal your own hand back on. You know, super glue is a wonderful thing, but maybe we should leave some things to professionals. Yeah. Ethan is not a professional. He's not certified in major engine repair, or biomedicine, or even, you know, literacy. He's just a guy doing his best, and yet somehow he knows how to work this machine. Do you think that he's forklift certified? <gasps> you know, I want to believe that he is. I, I'd i like to think he is, because I would make him the perfect, like, the perfect specimen. It's true. He's durable. He's sustainable. He can be dropped from immense heights. He can take so much structural damage. And he's also forklift certified. That is the singular most powerful creature that can ever exist. And if you are in that boat, I am in awe and fear of you. <laughs> Shout out to everyone who's forklift certified in chat. <laughs> yeah, everyone is forklift certified. You are more powerful than me. I hope you feel great because I fear you. And adore and respect you. Yes, and I, I want you to to put me on the on the, the forks and, and and do a lift. I know it's not safe, okay? I know, 
but I still want. Okay, I yearn. Oh God. Ethan can pass the test. You don't know that. Ethan absolutely could. Ethan can do whatever he sets his mind to. Listen, if we told Ethan right now that the key to saving his daughter was to get a forklift certification, he would. He would. He absolutely would. No questions asked. He'd be like, I gotta save Rose. Where's the test? I will take it. I'm not like my sibling. <laughs> we have an actual forklift certified friend in chat. I would just like to Let's out. go! <laughs> They're so powerful. <laughs> proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You get that money. You get that forklift. Actually, I don't know. Maybe don't get the forklift. Let the forklift get the thing. I don't. The I don't. I don't forklift power. personally. The strong will destroy the weak. That's the way of the world. So, folks who perceived that enemy we just came across, that was a man with a helicopter uh, propeller for a head. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. He's just gonna um, tell us how cute we are. And follow us around looking for our autograph the whole time. It's gonna be yeah. fine. I mean, how I, I would ask how he does that, but you know, Got Heisenberg go. has it covered. Yeah, there there's teamwork, there's coordination. They've got the drive and spirit. I would love um, I would love a mod of this or any time Propeller Guy is near, you hear the Thomas the Tank Engine theme. I'm pretty sure there's a mod for Propeller Guy that turns him into Thomas the Tank. Good! <laughs> there's, okay, okay, I there is absolutely a Thomas the Tank mod that I need to tell you about right now. It's not what you're thinking of, okay? I know you've all seen the, those Skyrim mods that turn the dragons into Thomas the Tank or like, M Mr. X as Thomas the Tank. No, this is so much better because it takes Lady D, right? And it does nothing to her except for her face, which it turns into a tiny Thomas the Tank. <laughs> Just her head is Thomas the Tank. Uh, the rest of her is as advertised. Can, can we combine it with the hat mod? I believe you can, yes. Because she's still wearing the hat. Go ahead. Just, just start combining like the weird mods. No yes. Mod. That's how you know you're doing it right. Oh, you're just gonna leave? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. I want actually, you to get out of the way. He might nice. fly up in front of me. In fact, he's doing it right now. But we got the quick kill. It's fine. On a casual new game playthrough, those enemies are so tough. Yeah. Because if you don't hit them in their light bulb, um, they just block everything. And they're armored, so you could waste two or three pipe bombs on them trying to get some of that armor off. Or you could just get real up close and personal and hope that you blast the light out. Um, neither strat feels good. <laughs> <laughs> This is an unpleasant part of a casual playthrough. Like, it is. It really is. Uh, you'll get lost for several hours. You'll yeah. reach this part and be like, oh no, what do I do? What do I do with my life? What do I do? I shoot the light. Yeah. You, you gotta but... go like Zelda on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are gonna be rewarded here with floppy leg Ethan. I hope you're ready. Oh, I love some floppy leg. Let me some floppy leg. Look at him, look at him, oh, look at him go. Beauty, beautiful. Best animation in the love game. him, he's doing the stanky leg. Also just, I love how like, I don't know. This sequence feels more unhinged than a lot of the other ones, like with like the propellers and everything, like. It just feels, yeah, like less supernatural and just mm -hmm. more like, because of that, more unhinged. It's like, Heisenberg, did you have a power or were you just absolutely bonkers and yonkers? He has a power. He's Magneto. He can yeah, control true. metal. Um, and we'll see the culmination of that for his boss fight. Like... It, it's unhinged sort of what happens to him, but you're absolutely right. This section of the game is tonally so different from the what they've set 
before this. And what's interesting is each sort of section of the game has its own distinct encapsulated feel, right? You had the 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 demodome, as I like to refer to it, which is <laughs> Which is horny central, right? That's mm-hmm. that's where the thirsty folks are. Uh, you've got your paranormal ghost horror with uh, Baby's House of Dolls. You've got your um, kind of gross horror with Moreau and his his eggs. Um, you've got werewolf genera horror in the stronghold, and here we have like. Frankenstein, like the monstrosity of man as the conundrum mm-hmm. and the real big bad. And I think that's really interesting. And then from here, we're going to experience like FPS horror is a good way to describe the Chris segment. And then, of course, our final boss, which is the culmination of really everything we've gone through here. Yeah, because uh, th- that's, a, that's a good way to point in like the the ending of this it does honestly get like a little bit emotional like mm-hmm. you know after we go through the, the feral sequence that's about to happen but that's not important mm-hmm. right now uh it'll get it'll get really interesting yeah uh, we haven't really mentioned what state rose is in right now oh that's right so chat you might notice that as we defeat lords, we've been picking up these, like, jars. Uh, those are pieces of our daughter. Mother Miranda turned our daughter into crystal gems, and we must assemble her literally like dragon balls. Yep. Um, we have to gather the pieces of rose. We put them all in the chalice, the giant chalice that we assembled the last time we saw the duke outside of Heisenberg's area. And we're just going to trust that the Mutamycete does its job and reassemble her properly. Yeah. Um, I- the lore reason for this is because the, the Mutamycete, the mold, like, has a hive mind state that basically puts a save file on your life. It remembers who you are, how you think. It remembers your memories. It remembers what you look like. It remembers what you care about. And this is literally how Ethan was reformed to be like a father, right? It remembered what it was told about him. Really? We're getting drilled. Um, And so Rose is remembered later on as baby. Yeah. Which, you know what, sure, after everything that's happened, sure. Um, you know, we, we can suspend all the disbelief we want. I, uh, I, I do love that when Ethan gets told, like, hey, Rose is in that jar, and also several other jars, like, he's kind of like, he, he's freaked out about it, but he's not, like, life-endingly freaked out. He's like, I'm gonna go get the jars, I guess. Like. Yeah, it's literally like, okay, well, I, I go get them. Uh, he doesn't question it. He's just like, okay, that is my daughter. I must protect those jar now. Why did I use the crank on this door? Beautiful. So do you remember Helicopter Man? Yeah, I love Helicopter Man. You really are. Well, I hope you're ready to say hello oh, and God. also goodbye to him. Of course. I one. Oh, he went left this time. One. Three, four, five, six. He's done. Now stay down. Oh, thank you, helicopter man. We love you. <laughs> we stand a spinning king. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you went through this entire game, but everybody referred to Heisenberg as, like, a short king the whole time for no reason. <laughs> but he's not short. No, but that, like, have you seen the memes of people being, like, like going into, like, tall guys, like, or, like, just, like, tall guys live feeds and, like, being like, what's up, short king, keep being you. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be so offended. <laughs> He'd be so aff- He's like, I'm ten feet tall, what are you talking about? Yeah. So the cutscene we just skipped is the one where we learn about Heisenberg's fantastic power. Um, 
we're gonna see very soon that he has turned himself into a transformer. You can't turn back now. He's more than me. Yes, a transformer. He is truly more than meets the eye. And because he is a large robot man, we must meet him on his terms with a uh, a tank with a chainsaw on it. Okay. <laughs> it's like really Chris the only Redfield solution. Built? <laughs> like, yes, Chris Redfield built this. We walked in on Chris Redfield assembling this and literally welding the chainsaw to our, our golf cart. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what this is, but he put a big gun and a big saw on it, and now we have to fight Heisenberg using the power of God in anime. Yeah. On I Village of Shadows difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty in the game, this is the choke point for most runs. You're under God damn that kind of makes sense, especially because, like, the physics is so boring. Like, the rest of the time, Mm -hmm. You also makes... cannot upgrade the cart at all, so it has the same damage output regardless of which difficulty you're on, right? So it just gets longer and worse. Longer and worse, and then on Village of Shadows, you can only block one hit from Heisenberg uh, before he kills you, because he does so much damage. So you can really only do this one time cool, the entire time you're fighting him. Yes. So Heisenberg's another character with really good one-liners. He's gonna have my favorite one in a second here, where he talks about Chris Redfield. Um, but first he's gonna talk a lot of crap about his family. And, uh, mention fatherly love, which is what we're Fatherly all love, today. yes. Yes, we are here gathered today to celebrate fatherly love. And what fathers would do to save their families. Yeah, Heisenberg is a little heated about Mother Miranda and all things considered. So, in a cutscene that we skipped, Heisenberg offered Ethan the chance to work together to take down Miranda because he's resentful of the fact that she's taken him to be her son. But also, he does not appreciate the way that he that she pits him against other people like siblings quote unquote here because they're not actually related um but she like pits them against each other in this weird power play to determine which of them is categorically the best and so like he is full of trauma and i just want to hug him and now he's dead you know he's he is free he broke the cycle he uh, broke the cycle we're gonna send him out the only way that matters yeah because we can see this in third person. Once again, Ethan's magnanimous powers of being heated and surviving. We cannot skip this. Nope. But that's fine. This is, it's, it's still a very cool sequence. So. It's super cool. Like, it feels, it feels good after everything came before it, although it's all <laughs> Your funeral. The sad thing that gets me about this is they force us to watch the cutscene, but they don't let us do the final shot against Heisenberg. Why? You know what? I'm not gonna ask. They, they it's wanted... like in Doom Eternal when they're like, "That's a big gun punching holes in Mars," and then they don't let you shoot the big gun that's punching holes in Mars. Rude of them. Literally Chekhov's gun for us to use the big gun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Ethan here is getting a phone call. We're skipping the cutscene, uh, but I'm gonna let you know right now that he's literally had his heart ripped out. He is dead dead. Um, not, not mold dead. He's dead dead right now. At least for a few minutes. So, we get to play as Chris. When was the last? Which is fine, because we like Chris. Kind of. We, Chris Redfield recon, we is the reason playing. why a lot of people bought this game, because his face is on the box. Taking five shots to the head's nothing to sneeze at. You know, I never thought about that, but Spooky. also if you saw the opening like cutscene, you'll probably have a lot of questions. 
Right. Chris shot Ethan's wife? Why would he do this? Why could he possibly do this? And we find out by now. Uh, here's, here's the facts you need to know about Chris Redfield for this game. He works for Umbrella Corporation for the Blue Squad as bioweapon cleanup. Because BSAA is the bad guys now. Um, and then on top of that, uh, he's also the alpha of the Hound Wolf Squad, which is his specific team within Blue Umbrella. Do you think um, he named so it? I think he retained his title from BSAA. He was alpha there too. Let's go. And no, I don't think he named himself. I think, um, I think it was one of those like military things where they're like Alpha Charlie Congo or whatever and then the other people died and it's just Alpha you know <laughs> they were just like alright well you get to keep that I guess Chris Redfield has a bad habit of being the sole survivor on his team with the exception of Jill which is why she's special side note Jill fantastic love Jill we love Jill I see you She's not here, but she's doing her best. No. You know who was originally planned to be here, though? Ada Wong. Uh... There is concept art for Ada Wong in this game, where she wears a Plague Doctor outfit. It's incredibly cool. It's very Bloodborne it's Let me buy. It's very Bloodborne inspired. And I am... It's another thing that I'm, like, sad that they cut every time. But there's hope because we have mercenaries mode and they do add other characters to that sometimes. So there's still hope that we could maybe get an Ada in mercenaries with that design. That would be sick. It would be cool. I'd love to see it. So the puzzle of this segment is to Baja Blast the Big Mold. There it is. There's the Big Mold, right? Yeah. Um, we have to Baja Blast it three times using the space laser. Chris Redfield has a habit of using space lasers. This has been a thing since Resident Evil 5. And it's no exception here. The first two are pretty free. The third one is risky sometimes. And I'm about to show you why. You'll notice the pattern is weird. This barrel is key. I want to make sure this barrel explodes when I want it to and not when it wants to. Because if it sort of just goes on its own, I lose a major part of my setup. Taking a bite there is fine. And there it goes, it's gone. I'm gonna have to use an extra grenade. My hope here is that these werewolves don't run up close enough that it hits them instead. Perfect. Thank you, werewolves. Take that. Good. Thank you. We're not that. done yet. I mentioned earlier that Jedi Percent requires you to use the Karambit knife, which I do not have shortcut here. That includes this boss fight. Yuri Strayer in this hole um, will be attacking us with a giant mallet that has spikes in it, and we can only fight him with a pocket knife. We will not be doing that here. That is... While I understand it... Pocket knife against this. Unacceptable. No space laser allowed. I feel like space. I. You know what? I kind of get it because, like, well, with the Jedi, you use space laser. But. I mean, I, Sith use the Death Star. They're yeah. former Jedi. It's all the Force, right? And space laser is almost the best way to sum up the entire plot of. <laughs> There's space it's laser. It's true. Okay, my goal here, yes, is to down this bestie without having to use the space laser, because it's faster. Why did I heal? You I'm gonna have to use the space laser. Fresh. And he's down. Much like everyone else, we gotta wait until they crumble, and then we can go. I'll keep going. The rest of you, 
stay above I don't think this is what Mold does. So like, I don't think no. Mold crumbles. I doubt she saw uh, not without some serious this. concern, Adam you know? know <laughs> uh, you know, but we can figure blue that cheese out comes in crumble Focus form, so I suppose Mold does True. crumble. True. Uh, this is the Mega Mycete. This is where the memory of everyone is stored. It is very suspiciously shaped. Um, shout out to the yeah. pregnancy horror theme of this game. Mm -hmm. It is literally a mold baby that has been crafted by Miranda over a century of her experimentation as an attempt to bring back her daughter. What we learn in this room specifically is that Miranda, uh, found the mutamyce on a like exploration to find some sort of power to resurrect her kid that she lost in a plague and along the way she became what she is she also is the one responsible for creating evelyn from resident evil 7. yeah we're we're not gonna see that but yep that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mother of the year in parentheses s so mother of the years Mother of the millennia. Yeah. Here? Been alive for a long time, also. So you might be asking why Ethan was walking and talking? That particular sequence was taking place inside the mold. Uh, his lump of flesh got found by the merchant, and the merchant, for story reasons, has brought us to Miranda. Um, the game openly acknowledges that this is a little goofy, He's like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just kind of doing it because I know you want to come here. Uh, and you're like, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> but regardless of his motivation, I'm glad that he oh, carted us here. This is the final boss fight we're walking up on. It's going to be pretty quick. Time will happen once we hit the cutscenes. There will be two cutscenes at the end that we'll skip. And then there will be a title. A uh, card that says the father's story is now done. And that's when the run is over. Fun fact about Miranda here. She's gorgeous. She's attractive. She's fantastic. And if you're not shooting her with the Magnum, she has about 30 distinct attacks that she can hit you with. And she's horrifying the entire time. God. But because we have the Magnum, we just literally empty a tire clip in her and then we progress. This is the final sequence. We have plot armor, we have unlimited ammo. I'm gonna shoot at her while she goes booga booga in my face. Time is coming up very quickly. Booga 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 booga, goodbye, and that's time. Nope, don't restart. We gotta get the cutscene. Yay! Yay! Fatherhood! Um, fatherhood, the joy of parenting. His story is done. Mm hmm So this is the end of the Ethan Winter saga. The unfortunate reality is he was dead the entire time. Yep. But we finished the game in an hour, 44 minutes, and 11 seconds. Yeah. Which is very good. You did phenomenally, especially with the periodic mold infestations. I know. The persistence of that mold was really troubling. Yeah. I mean, I suppose that can happen. We're just we're just <laughs> Ethan out right now. <laughs> All right. You know? Ethan out? I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. I see it and I love it. Big Scared, where can we find you? So I live on twitch.tv slash big scared. I'm also on most other um, social medias as either big scared or I'm big scared. I also live in the Lady Arcader server and I will be running this game at Flame Fatales on the 9th, 19th of August around 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, there will be a bid war to determine whether we do it in third person or in first person. Ooh. So stay tuned Ooh. for that. Ooh. I mean, everybody that was here, you're going to want to see it in third person again, right? Right? You third person is a good time. So, But first saying. person is faster. Mm, that's fair. All right. Do you have any other shout outs you want to give? JPEG, where can we find you? Oh, me? Little old yes, me? Yes, you. 
<laughs> well, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash JPEG underscore EXE or on Twitter as at also JPEG, J-A-Y-P-E-G. Uh, those are really the two places that I hang out the most. Um, and you will see me, we'll just do this kind of uh, as a little reminder. So while Big Scared will be at Flame Fatales, I will be behind the scenes. So if you see some per like particularly cursed memes next week, um, I may or may not be responsible for those. Uh, you'll have to speak to my lawyer. Uh, but uh, JPEG the meme keeper. I love meme it. Keeper. Mm -hmm. I, I, I also do, just want to give a very quick shout out to my stream team, the Clock Tower. A lot of folks came by tonight, and I really appreciate that. Yay. Thank you, Clock Tower, for hanging out. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. All right. So, with that, if we are good to go, uh, everybody stick around for a second. We are going to go to intermission, but let the phenomenal, wonderful big scared take care of any of the mold that is left in their in their house or in their controller maybe dust that off thank you so much <laughs> you have been fantastic uh we are gonna know you oh you you bring out the mold in me in the loveliest way possible <laughs> All right, that's the note that we're going to go to intermission with. Thank you, everybody. Stick around for just a second. We will be... All right, my friends. I am so thankful that you all stuck around and hung out with us through mold, through fatherhood, through motherhood, through giant babies, through whole, uh, whole, 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 several times. We so appreciate you here. However, our episode of Attract Mode has come to an end, and I am so sorry to say that, but that is A-OK, -okay, because what do I have to tell you? So next time on Attract Mode, uh, we're actually on vacation, but that's OK, I promise. That's OK, because Flame Fatales 2023 is starting this weekend. We're super excited. We've had so many members of our community participating, like we just said. Big Scared is going to be there, running Resident Evil, and I will be, you know, doing some social media in the back. There's been tons of Lady Arcaders that are going to be there. It's going to be an absolute blast, and we do hope to see you there. That's going to be on Games Done Quick's channel, August 13th to August 20th. But for another cool charity, let's talk about our raid, which is what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to be raiding over to the No Glitches Allowed channel for a complete a thon, and they are raising money for Somos Familia Valle, which is a super cool LGBTQ charity, and we're super excited to support them. And again, thank you so much for sticking around. Stick around just a couple seconds longer for the raid, and we will see you on the other side.